السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الاشیاء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شأنه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صلوات so we are in the last week and last days of شعبان and we are almost eight days or a week away from Ramadan. Ramadan, the month of Allah is commencing, is approaching. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us another opportunity in our life to welcome this great month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month is important, the month, month is auspicious, the month is blessed, the month is month of mercy. But we have to prepare ourselves before the commencement of this month. And we should get ready to receive those great blessings of this month. As you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said, that this month is the month of my nation. Although we call it month of Allah, Shahrullah. But the Prophet has said in one occasion that Rajab is Allah's month. Shaban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my nation, my ummah. So in this sense, we can understand why the Prophet has called this our month. And why we call it Allah's month? Because, of course, this is very special month. Although every day belongs to Allah, every, hour, every minute and second in our life belongs to Allah. But there are certain important days. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing Musa alayhi salam and calling him and saying وَذَكِّرْهُمْ Remind your people بِأَيَّامِ Allah. Remind them the days of Allah. So there are certain days that especially belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their very special status. Just like 
in this world, everything belongs to Allah. Every single thing in this creation belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we call Baytullah, Allah's house, so we refer to one single house, one specific house. Otherwise, every house, everything, every place, uh, Allah's place, Allah, you know, this, the, you know, the whole earth, Allah's earth. This universe belongs to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah. But we call Baytullah. Why? Because of its very special status. The same thing here. Ramadan, Allah's month, because of its special status. But it is our month also. Why it is our month? Because in this month, we are the people who receive the blessings. This month does not benefit Allah. It benefits us. It belongs to Allah in the sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of mercy and blessings in this month more than other months. Allah likes his servants to obey him, to spend their time in reading Quran, in worshiping him, uh, and uh, just sitting and talking to him and supplicate and do dua and all those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. Spend your time in all these things. This is why we call it Allah's month. But the benefit of this month, you know, goes to us. That's why we call it our month, month of Ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran says that in this month, the most important thing that is wajib and which is the uniqueness of this month is fasting. So what you do in this month, when somebody asks you what you do in this month, you do many things. Many sh ways of worship, salawat. Many ibadat you perform in this month. But when somebody asks you what you do in this month, immediately the first thing you say, we fast. Why? Because the fasting is the unique feature of this month. And this is what Quran says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 183. Addresses, Ya Look, Quran, Quran is eloquence, Quran is beauty, you know, how Quran explains things. Ya ayyuhal ladhina, O people, kutiba alaykum as About the same month, which is Ramadan, and this is the only month which has been mentioned in Quran, only month, with the name, one month, Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. This is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Ramadan. Which month? Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. In which Quran was revealed. So the month of Ramadan, the benefits of the month of Ramadan reaches to whom? Only only Muslims? No. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan lil nas. This Quran is hudan, is guidance for all people. The entire mankind. It is guidance for everybody. No matter to what, you know, color or creed or country someone belongs. But everyone will receive the benefit of this month. Why? Because in this month something revealed which is the guidance for every single human being. So the benefit reaches to everyone. But the obligation is for whom? Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman. So fasting is for Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman. 
Why? Why is this difference? Because fasting is a deed that belongs to the Islamic laws, do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts apply on somebody who accepts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his master. Mawla. That's why we, we call it Amr al Amr al Mawlawi. The order from a master to his subject. So somebody who accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rabb, as Lord, as Master, as Creator, as God, who accepted Him, He will follow His laws. But the people who did not accept Him as Lord, they don't, they don't believe in Allah. They don't have apparent obligation except in believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that, this, they don't have oblig you know, obligation because they, they don't follow uh, the instructions. They don't follow the orders of Allah. Why? Because they don't believe in Allah. But still they receive the blessings from that side. So nothing goes from their side, but they receive from the other side. And the other side is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look the relationship between Allah and uh, the people. The, the, this is the relationship between Allah and people. Allah always gives, gives to everybody. He, did not, he doesn't stop from giving. Why? Because he is Lord. He is the creator. Somebody believes or he doesn't believe, no matter what. Still, he will remain the Lord. He will remain the God. He will remain the Rabb and nourisher and cherisher. He will remain the giver. Correct? It is now human being. If he, believe, if he believes in Allah, he will do two things. One, believing and one, practicing. And that's why we can put it this way. In Islam, there are two things. One that you just accept from him. Or you can say it this way. One, the things that you, ac you accept from Allah. And the other is something that Allah accepts from you. What you accept from Allah is the faith and belief usul al deen Whatever he said, accept it. And what he accepts from you is your deeds, your dua, your amal. So this is two-way uh, relationship. But those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one way you know, relationship remains there. From Allah only. He is giving. Fir'aun was receiving, you know, you know, was re you know, receiving all the blessings, all the ni'mat. In this world, of course, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Namrud was receiving. He was saying, I'm Lord. I'm the God. Worship me. Still, he was receiving from whom? From Allah. Anything he had from whom? The tongue by which he was ordering people to worship him, the tongue was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power that he was using to force people to worship him, this power was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was still receiving, you know, receiving from Allah, but he was not giving anything back. But the mu'min receives and gives back. Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzil fihi al-Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran for everyone. Everyone. Every human being can benefit from this guidance of Quran. But in this month, this Quran, which was for every human being, the fasting is not for every human being. It is for Ya Yuhalladina Amanu, O people who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for people before you. You might ask why? 
Why not no, you know, other people can fast? What is wrong if somebody else comes and says, okay, I'm, I want to fast, but I don't believe in fasting. I don't believe in Allah, but I want to fast. No, it is okay. It is okay, but don't call it fast. Don't call it siyam. You might call it dieting. You might call it something else. Or fasting in general sense, but not fasting of Islamic laws. Why? Because in this fasting, you have to make your intention first. Even you as a Muslim, if you break your intention in the, in the middle of the day, anytime, you cannot redo your intention. Your, your fast is broken. It's gone. It's gone. If you, if you decide to drink at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., before Maghrib, say, let me drink, I'm uh, too thirsty, let me drink. And, and you s extend your hand to drink with full intention, but then you change your mind, no, 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 let me wait two, two more hours. Is your fasting okay? No, you already broke your fast. Fast does not break with eating and drinking only. It breaks with your intention too. If you break your intention, the fast is broken, it's gone. And you cannot fix it, it's gone. You have to just give a qada after Ramadan and if you have done it purposely, there is a kafara also. Why? Because intention is everything. So when, if, you, if, you don't have, if, if somebody doesn't have the intention of following Allah's instructions, Allah's order, as Allah, as God, as Creator, as Lord. He is saying, He is the Mullah, He is the Master, He is ordering me to do this. That's why I am fasting. If you don't have this intention, you cannot call it fast. You might remain hungry for a while, you, may, uh, you remain thirsty for a while, you don't drink and eat for a while, it is okay. This happens in, um, in dieting you know, process. But here it is not, the, yeah, you might receive the benefit of dieting if you don't eat much in iftar. If, iftar should be balanced. But if you break everything in iftar, really, you break the fasting and break everything, all the benefits of fasting too, with the, with the iftar. MashaAllah, look the iftar. So everything is, it is balanced in Quran. You will, you, will, you will receive the benefits, but you are not doing it for this benefit. Keep this in mind. Sumu tasahu. This is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu Sumu tasahu. Very short hadith. As I said, always keep, you know, try to, to, to memorize such short hadith and, and ayat or phrases from a hadith in Quran. Interesting. Sumu means just fast. The Prophet said fast. Tasuhu. You will improve your health. <coughs> fast, you will improve your health. Tasuhu. So fast in this fasting will cause health and improvement in your health. So when this is true, and the Prophet is saying this, that fasting is a good cause for good health, then okay, I'm going to fast. I say, I am fasting for my good health. Not qurbatan Allah, qurbatan ila sahha. Right? For good health, for good muscles, for dieting. I'm fasting for this purpose, but not qurbatan Allah. Can you call it fast? It's not fast in the meaning of Islamic terminology. That's why it starts with Ya ayyuhal amanu. Here is the, the philosophy behind why Allah starts this ayat with Ya ayyuhal amanu. Quran is Shahru Ramadan alladhi it is for everyone. Quran is for everyone. How about fasting? 
No, fasting is not for everyone. For whom? Why? Why only for, an, for the people who believe? Why? When guidance for everyone, so this is also part of guidance. Let somebody else fast. No. Quran says the purpose of this fasting is what? The purpose of this past, there is a purpose for this past, you know, you know this, this siyam fasting. In the end of ayat, Surah Baqarah 183, what it says? So that you become muttaqi, pious. So the piety is the goal of fasting. How amazing is this? Now, see, relate ayat to another ayat and you will understand the beauty of Quran. When Quran says it is hudan linnas, this is for every human being. Which one? Quran. The guidance is for every human being. But fasting is not. But fasting is part of Quran. Part, fasting is part of divine guidance. So when Allah says guidance is for everybody, so Allah says this, this guidance is for you, this is not for you, this is not for you. Discrimination. When guidance is for everyone and, and fasting is part of guidance, so why this is not for other people who don't believe in Allah? The reason is in the first ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Alif Lam Mim, Dhalik Al-Kitab, La Raiba Fi, Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. So Quran is Hudan, is guidance for Muttaqeen. But in this ayat, in Surah Baqarah, the same Surah Baqarah, Allah says, no, hudan lil nas. So it is hudan lil nas or hudan lil muttaqin. Which one is right? Quran is hudan lil nas. But Quran is hudan lil muttaqin. So which one is right? Both are true. Why? It is hudan lil nas as an order coming from God is for everybody. But as in the sense of acceptance, who will accept it? Who will take it? Who will follow this guidance? Only the pious people, muttaqi. Here is the difference. Why in, in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, said that Quran is for everybody, but fasting is for mu'mineen only. Why? Because who will accept this guidance? The people who are pious. So fasting is, the purpose of fasting is piety. Once you receive this piety, then you will start receiving all the benefits of the guidance of Quran. So this is a period of training, brothers and sisters. And it depends. There are some people who say, oh my God, fasting in this hard days in these hard days. It's very hard to do it in this hot weather. But no. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, oh, Few things I like in this world. Very few things. One of them is fasting in hot weather. When that long and hard days, fasting in those hard and long days, which comes once a while in your, in your lifetime. Not always. Because the, the time and weather changes. Nowadays, mashallah, there's a good opportunity. Some people wait for January and February to fast. It's easy, short days. You don't even feel it. Right? He said, okay, I'm fasting. I don't know I'm fasting. I'm just eating. Very short days. And very nice weather. No, no. Amir Umin says, the weather, which, when it is hard to fast, I like to fast at that time. Why? Because here is your test. Here is your test. And here is your test. 
both test and test dhaiqa everybody has a test for any something some people like this some people like something else some people like something else what you like other people don't like all right and if you do, don't believe in this go and see it in your home in your house right you like something your your wife doesn't like the other you know the same thing you try to like what she likes this is good advice for all of you but this happens your brother your sister your friend everybody has different tests but this is a test of a mu'min that he likes what allah likes when allah is happy i am happy although whatever i am doing is so hard no it's not hard anymore it's now fun for me it becomes fun really ramadan is fun spiritual fun not the iftar fun okay iftar is also fun but keep it in balance please <laughs> fun means spiritual you feel it you feel closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la'allakum tattaqun la'allakum tattaqun the end in the end of the day in the time of iftar you feel closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next day you feel closer and then next day more close 30 days of training may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and opportunity to really benefit from every single day and single hour of the month of ramadan which is approaching and next friday is going to be the last friday of this month of shaban and then ramadan will start we have to prepare ourselves from now